Over the past few weeks, I've been researching the wonder effects of Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and sharing my findings through videos on this channel. And don't get me wrong, there's still loads of stuff to be found out about those, but I've also gotten a lot of questions about another aspect of the game, namely the game's badgers. Badgers? No, no, <laughs> namely the game's badges. So today I thought we'd have a look at how badges work behind the scenes, from messing with their parameters to seeing how bad challenge levels work, including the final final challenge. On that note, this might be a bit silly to say more than a month after the game's release, but yes, this video will be full of spoilers. Anyways, so how do badges work? Well, what I think is interesting is that they're not really a separate system from other player-related stuff. So you might have already seen me mess with player models in a previous video, and if so, you're aware that, for example, the model for the parachute cap badge is just a part of the main player model. And that same thing carries through into the game's parameters, because the configuration files for each badge are also stored alongside all the other player stuff in each player's respective file in the pack folder. So for example, another thing I've already shown off previously is the fact that the parameters for the floaty jump badge are stored right alongside the parameters for the normal jump. That means messing with badge parameters works just like it does for any other player parameter, you just got to know where to look. Like the parachute cap badge parameters are actually in this player airspin param file, because I guess the game just considers a parachute cap to be a fancy version of an airspin due to the similar controls and stuff. Regardless, that means it's quite easy to change the physics of the parachute cap badge. Like here, I inverted its downwards velocity, so now when you equip the cap, you start floating upwards. Interestingly, there are two Y velocity values, one for when you first use the cap in midair, and one for the gliding afterwards. So we can use this to make the cap first shoot you downwards and then upwards afterwards. It's really weird. The floaty jump badge is just as easy to mess with, increase the values and you get a higher jump, nothing too crazy. In fact, speaking of higher jumps, somehow I managed to mess with the timed higher jump badge to make it to where, um, yeah, I made the jump so high that you jump outside of the play area altogether and instantly die. This actually makes for a pretty funny challenge since it means you can never jump twice in a row. Let's see what other badges are there. Am I the only one who forgets this faster run speed badge even exists? Well either way here I made it even faster. Wow insane. This exclamation mark block badge is actually quite neat. When I first played the game, I never really used this one, and I still don't really recommend using it because it kind of ruins the design of a lot of levels, but the crazy thing is just how far they went with these blocks. They're in every normal level of the game, and sometimes they lead to secret areas and stuff. Actually, maybe the best way of looking at their usage in levels is by using the Fushigi level editor. The editor is still far from finished, but at least it's a nice way of displaying levels for now. We can also use it to move objects such as the exclamation mark blocks. In fact here, I use them to convey a very subtle message. Let's see, the rhythm jump badge is kind of insane because every single level theme in the game has two additional music tracks with these beats and claps that are only used for this badge. I'm pretty sure things like the mid-air spin jump and wall climb jump badges don't actually have their own physics values, so I'm not sure how we could really mess with those. So let's just move on from messing with the badge parameters and instead, well, mess with some different parameters, because you might be wondering, how do badge challenge levels work? They automatically equip you with a badge, you don't lose a life if you die in one of them, and at the end they give you the levels badge if you didn't already own it. Well, the way the game determines which levels are badge challenge levels is super simple. In the files inside of the course info folder, there's this course kind value which for badge challenge levels is, well, badge challenge. There's also the need badge id enter course parameter, which determines which badge the level actually equips. So sure enough, if I add both of these values to some random level, the game now treats this level as if it's a badge challenge level, including the fact that you don't lose a life when you die. That's cool. I suppose this would be a cool way of making one of those Super Mario Bros. Wonder challenge videos where people only play with the invisibility badge or something like that. You could just make every level equip that badge automatically. By the way, if you put the badge into a level that the player doesn't already own, it will actually be given to the player once they beat the level, including the whole Florian cutscene on the road map. Just like how it works 
throughout the original game. Something peculiar happens if I remove the need badge ID enter course value from a badge challenge level, because now we've got a badge challenge level without the required badge. So what's going to happen now? Well, when entering the level, the badge slot now appears as empty, but I still can't equip a badge myself even when pressing R. And apart from that, this seems to just work like a normal level now, including the fact that I lose a life when I die. So I guess I just accidentally stumbled upon a way of making it to where a level doesn't allow you to use any badge. I suppose that might also be useful. Anyways, there is one more level type worth investigating, the final final challenge. What makes this level different from all the others is that different badges automatically get equipped for each area. If we look at this level's course info file, we can see that it has a unique course kind, which is Badge Medley. I suppose that's an appropriate name for what this level is. It also still has a badge that's automatically equipped, which is the parachute cap, which makes sense. But then how are all the other badges throughout the level determined? Well, for that we have to go to the area param files, which of course determine parameters for each area of each level. And sure enough, in there we can find this badge medley equip badge ID value, which corresponds to the badge that gets equipped in each area of the level. So sure, we could copy all of this stuff over to another random level and turn it into a badge medley as well. But I think the coolest thing is is that this parameter can actually be put into any area and sure enough it will automatically equip a badge when you enter that area no matter what kind of level this is so that means you could make just a normal level with a bonus room that automatically equips a badge the only downside of this is that that badge then stays equipped even when you go back to an area that doesn't have a badge that's automatically equipped but regardless i still think this idea has a lot of potential so there we go unsurprisingly badges and badge challenges are really not that complicated behind the scenes in case you're interested in messing around with customized badges or anything Super Mario Bros. Wonder Modding related really, I'd recommend joining the Wonderland Discord server linked down below. I suppose I already did a super subtle subscribe plug earlier, but yeah, that's still a thing I'd recommend doing in case you're interested in Super Mario Bros. Wonder Modding. But either way, thank you for watching, see you later, and bye bye